All right, we're going to the word of the Lord this morning, and it is found in Acts, the 23rd chapter, and the 11th verse, and it is our custom to stand for the reading of the word. So if you'll join me on your feet, we're going to Acts, the 23rd chapter, and we're going to the 11th verse. And I'm going to read that. And the night following, everybody say the night following, the Lord stood by him and said, Be of good cheer, Paul, for as thou hast testified of me in Jerusalem, so must thou bear witness also at Rome. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word, and you might be seated. But as you're seated, I want you to just encourage yourself and say, I'm going to make it. Now tell your neighbor, you're going to make it. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what enemies are around you. You're going to make it. Bless the name of the... You can just praise him right now for that. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. I don't care what it looks like. I'm going to make it. Bless the name of the Lord. What a powerful... Bible character Paul is. We know so much about Paul because he's one of our favorite biblical characters. Much of the, the scriptures that we quote come from Paul. Uh, he, he, he's notable for those thorns in his flesh. He's notable for many uh, missionary journeys in the scripture. And we often read um, from many of his letters um, to those that he reared in the ministry. And today is no different. We're talking about Paul, and we're looking at the book of Acts. But I have a question for you that I just want to get you to think about. Has somebody ever made a promise to you? Has somebody ever made a promise to you, and you were so excited about the promise that you forgot to ask some important questions like when, <laughs> how, where, right. how much? <laughs> You get what I'm saying? And you can get so excited. I mean, it's like if I needed to borrow $20, and I called up Smith, my good friend, and I said, uh, he, maybe he's not my good friend. <laughs> Let me $20. And I needed to borrow $20, and I called up Smith, and he said, yeah, I got that for you. I said, oh, praise the Lord, because I needed that $20. Thank you, Jesus. My $20 is I hang up the phone, and I'm just thanking God and praising God. And then, remember, I need to still get the $20. <laughs> Right? So what am I going to see Elder Smith to get the money? And so a lot of times, somebody, people make us promises, and they don't actually perform what they promise when they promise it. And you're going to have to follow me th this morning. So you can get really excited about what you are promised even before you see the result of the promise. All right? In our text today, our person is Paul. Let's get you to where we are in, 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 in Scripture. We've got to get you to Acts, uh, the 23rd chapter. Paul is um, at the end of his third missionary journey. And Paul's at the end of his third missionary journey, and he's traveling through Tyre and Caesarea. Now, in these particular places, as he stops, he meets prophets in each of those cities. And the prophets tell him, Paul, do not go to Jerusalem. You're going to have a bad time in Jerusalem. It's, it's not looking good for you. In fact, one of the prophets runs up to Paul, takes Paul's belt, and wraps himself in Paul's belt and says, Paul, this is what you have to look forward to if you go to Jerusalem. And Paul said, I don't care. Maybe in Jerusalem I'll die, but I'll die for a good cause. So Paul has decided that he's going to go to Jerusalem no matter what. And so Paul gets to Jerusalem. And once he gets to Jerusalem, uh, he meets the saints there. This is not his first time uh, in Jerusalem since his conversion. And so the saints are there, and they're talking to Paul, and they're reminding Paul about how wonderful it was for them to receive Christ through his ministry. But they said, Paul, we have one issue here. You see, all the people here are really hating on you because you came down here and talked about the crucifixion of Jesus, and the Jews don't want to hear that. And so what we need you to do is 
We need you to go make a scene in the temple, and we need you to be doing the things that Jews do so that the, the Jews will believe that you are actually not against the law of Moses. And so, so it, 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 it's like when you have mentored somebody and they ask you for a favor. Paul says, all right, I'll do that. I'll go to the temple. So Paul goes to the temple. And at the temple, he participates in the Jewish ritual, and he finishes it up. And on the last day, the scripture says that all the Jews who heard that he was there, they came to the temple. Everybody say, to the temple. They came to the temple, and they dragged Paul out of the temple, and they beat him. I said they dragged Paul out of the temple, and they beat him. I mean, they beat him. They, they, they were so afraid. Some of the Roman soldiers were so afraid. They said, if we don't go down there and get Paul, they're going to beat Paul to death. And so they go down, and they get Paul, and Paul is in chains, and he's on his way to jail. And somebody says, hey, wait a minute. Uh, Paul, do you have anything to say? And so Paul says, of course I have something to say. So Paul starts talking about how he hadn't done anything wrong and sin and, and Jesus is real. And if they hadn't known what happened on the road to Damascus, their attitudes would be changed. And he just essentially fans the fire. And so he, so what the, what the, the priest at the time, somebody come over here and slap Paul in the face. So after Paul had been beaten, now, now he hadn't done anything. After Paul had been beaten almost to death, and slapped in the face, he's in prison. And he's in prison, and the Bible says that the Lord stood by him. Yes. Now, now this, is, this, this is very important, because sometimes you hear folks saying, well, oh, I just felt the presence of the Lord, and oh, you know, I heard a voice from, but the Bible says that Jesus stood by him. Yes. Isn't that powerful? Yes. When you are at your lowest point, you need to know that God will stand by you. God will stand by you. You will feel the presence of God in a way that you have never felt, even at your lowest point. And so I thought, oh, praise the Lord. Acts 23 and 11, that's my message. I'm going to preach, God will stand by you. I'm going to get tuned up and all excited. I'm going to do what y'all do so wonderfully. And, 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 I, and I said, okay, Lord. This is, but I kept reading because, you know, I talked to the other yesterday, sometimes well, Study. So you're like, okay, there's something else, you know, but I'm, but, the, but I'm going to preach God will stand by you. And I got all excited, and it occurred to me that right after Jesus makes this wonderful promise to Paul, everything after that is a problem. Okay? So here Paul is. Uh, God says, Paul. I, I'm standing by you, Missionary Anderson, and, and I love you, and, and don't worry about it. I know they told you not to come to Jerusalem, but you came to Jerusalem, and I appreciate you. you. did what I told you to do. I'm pleased with what you have done, and because I'm pleased with what you have done, I'm going to make sure that you get to Rome. Now, there's something I, I need you to hang on to. Rome is 2,300 miles from Jerusalem. I'm not talking about no, you know, you know, and, and sometimes what we want is, okay, God, you said that uh, you're going to make sure that I get from Jerusalem to Rome, and so I'm expecting, just like manna fell from heaven, I'm expecting a round-trip ticket, first class, I wanted to just fall here because you said I was going to Rome, so I expect that you're going to make sure that I get to Rome tomorrow, I'm going to Rome tomorrow. But unfortunately, that's not what happened. The day after the Lord tells uh, Paul that he is going to get to Rome, the Bible says that 40 of his enemies call a fast and say that we are not going to stop fasting until Paul is dead. I'm not even going to talk about folks fasting on you. I'm not going to leave that alone. <laughs> Paul, uh, uh, so Paul is not only in prison for doing nothing, but he has some very uh, uh, powerful enemies. He has uh, some enemies that are influential. And because they have made this scene saying that they would not uh, 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 bow or they would not quit fasting until Paul is dead, Paul has to go to court. So Paul goes to court, and he has to see the governor. And at this time, the governor is Felix. 
And so he has this little, you know, uh, thing, you know, what did you do, what they say you did. Felix says, well, you look a little innocent. And so, but you're innocent, but I'm just going to keep you here. And so Paul, this trip, now God has already told him, Paul, you're going from Jerusalem to Rome. But unfortunately, Paul gets to hang out in Caesarea for two years. This is two years after the promise. Two years after the promise, Paul is still in Caesarea. He's not in Rome. And so Paul is trying to figure out what happens. Well, what has happened was the Jews had so much influence that they decided that they were going to tell the governor, you just hold Paul there until we tell you to. He's innocent, but you just you hang on to him there. And so what happens is, is Felix, the governor, goes, he's a politician, he goes out of office. And he is succeeded by Festus. Now, Festus is green, right? He's a new leader. You know, he doesn't know much. And so the Jews are like, hey, Festus, what are you doing? Let me talk to you for a little bit. And they say, what do you need, what do you need you to do? We need you to bring Paul from Caesarea back to Jerusalem and we're in you, because for this trial we're going to have. And then we're just going to kill him right then and there. But remember, God said that Paul had done what he was supposed to do in Jerusalem, and he was going where? He's going to Rome. I'll just nudge your neighbor real quick and say, neighbor, neighbor. you're going to make it to Rome. Praise God. Oh, put your hands together for that. So Paul, and I, this is just how I, this is just me, so I, I appreciate y'all for enduring me. Y'all look like y'all are looking at me, so I appreciate that. Paul makes me feel good. <laughs> I feel good. Thank y'all. So, so, so Paul is, is, Festus is new and green, and they say they try to stall him a little bit. And so Festus, you know, new in his job, he says, okay, well, let me hear all the facts. Come on, Paul, give me what you need to, tell me what, what, what happened two years ago. Tell me what happened. Why are you here? And so Paul begins to tell them about, you know, how he was innocent and dragged out the temple and how he was there for the right reasons and intentions. And he's a Jew. He's an upstanding Jew. And he used to, he just goes on and tells uh, uh, Festus all this stuff. And Festus is like, okay, see, you seem pretty innocent to me. And so, but he says, well, but the problem is, is that I got some, you got some influential enemies who do not want you to leave here. And so Paul says, well, tell you what. Because I'm a Roman, I actually want to go see Caesar. I do not want to be heard by anybody. Now, Caesar is where? Rome. Where is Caesar? Rome. All right. So Paul has set himself up to go where? Rome. The problem is, is that he's still in jail. How is Paul going to get from Jerusalem to Rome as a prisoner? All right. So this new guy, Festus, doing his job, he takes company with King Agrippa. And King Agrippa uh, says, well, you know, this is pretty interesting. Got my daughter, Bernice, here, and we're here in town, and this is an interesting story. I'd love to hear from Paul myself. And so the Bible says that they make a scene. I mean, pomp and circumstance. I'm imagining tea and China, and just in my head, I'm seeing balloons and just all kind of fancy stuff. They make a scene, and all the dignitaries are there. Everybody who's, everybody who's anybody is there. And they pull Paul in, and Paul starts talking about how uh, one time, one day, you know, he was on his way to kill some saints, and uh, while he was on his way to kill some saints, um, he was blinded and knocked down the road to Damascus. Jesus saved him, sent him to, I mean, he's just telling him everything. And he's so convincing, he's so powerful in what he says that the Bible says that Agrippa is like, well, man, I might as well just get saved right now. <laughs> I mean, he talked, to, he talked real good. He talked real good, and, and, and Agrippa was impressed. And so he pulls Festus to the side, and he says, well, uh, uh, this was good, you know, enjoying myself. Glad everybody got to see me in all my good apparel. But uh, what occurs to me is that this man is innocent, but we can't release him now 
Because if we release him now, then we will not be able to, send, to, to respond to his request to see Caesar. He said he wanted to see Caesar, and so he's got to go see Caesar because that's how he wants to appeal the case. So we can't do anything, but we're going to make sure he gets to Rome. All right. Now, 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 there's, a, there, there's an important caveat here that I think is important. Acts, the ninth chapter, in the 15th verse, and I'm talking about you're going to make it. In Acts, the ninth chapter, in the 15th verse, in the 16th verse, God is talking to Ananias about Paul. And here's what he says. He says, but the Lord said unto him, go, for he is a chosen instrument of mine to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings. Uh-huh. And the sons of Israel. For I will show him how much he must suffer for my name's sake. And so let's just let's put this together. In order for Paul to, for the, the, the purpose and the plan for Paul's life to come to fruition, he had to be beat in Jerusalem, slapped in the face, imprisoned, in order to get an audience with kings. So what this scripture is saying is that this is a part of God's plan for Paul's life. It's not incidental. It's not something that just happened. And you need to know, we need to know, that everything that is happening in our life, it's not happenstance. It's not a mistake. It's not something that somebody just decided to put on us. It's the will of God for our life. Now, now I, and I, okay, okay. So God orchestrates this situation where Paul is in the company of kings. And I want you to think about this. Paul has some very influential enemies because it was God that wanted Paul to have a very influential audience. You get it? Paul needed influential enemies so that he could have an influential audience because God wanted him to profess the name of Jesus in the company of kings. Praise, praise the Lord. And, and, and so why is it that we get all worked up when the boss is on our track? Why is it that we get so worked up when our influential enemies are after us? Could it be that God is creating an audience for us to manifest his glory? Could it be that God is using our situation to manifest his presence in our lives? Could it be that the most difficult thing in our life is for the purpose of glorifying and magnifying God? I know that's not popular because we want to hear, oh, I'm coming out, oh, tomorrow by this time. And the reality is, if there's some things that you're in because God wants to get the glory out of your life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And so Paul, Paul has some influential enemies. And God gives him some influential audiences. Then, finally, because Paul said that he wanted to be heard by Caesar, he's off to Rome. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I thought about this. I said, Lord, I got 20 minutes to get Paul from Jerusalem to Rome. How am I going to do that? And he's almost there. <laughs> he's almost there. Listen, it's like, you, have you ever, and I, this is the way, this is where my mind works. I'm thinking about some difficult days that I have had, whether it's at work, in my family, at school, whatever it is, and, and somebody just come and drop that word of encouragement in your life, and you're like, thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for how you use such and such. Thank you, Lord. And then it seems like the next day, you're back in trouble. That's Paul, right? Okay, got through the Jews in Jerusalem, got through Festus, got through Felix, got through Agrippa, and now it's time for him to go to Rome. So he gets on the ship, praise God, I'm going to my destination, I'm walking towards purpose, God's going to reveal himself, oh, praise the Lord, what? A shipwreck. 
a shipwreck. A shipwreck. God, didn't you say that I was going from Jerusalem to Rome? How is this happening? A shipwreck. I done already went through all these crazy people, and you got me in the center of a shipwreck. So the Bible says that it was dark, there was no sun, there was no star, all the people. Now, this is what I want you to know about this, and I omitted this earlier, but Paul is on the ship with a whole bunch of prisoners. And th there are two things that are important about Paul's ship ride. I don't even know where it was. I don't know where I'm at right now. I'm somewhere between Jerusalem and Malta. So uh, Paul uh, is on, and the Bible says that there's a gentleman named Julius who is, over, who is the, the guard, per, per se, on the, on the ship. And the Bible says that he shows Paul favor. And, and that's really important because you need to know. Now, have you noticed that there, and, that you, 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 and I'm, I'm telling you this, you've got to believe me. Between Acts 23 and 11, and somewhere in Acts 26, God has not said a word to Paul. He ain't said, keep on going, be encouraged. He had, he had, God has not spoke to Paul according to the scripture at all. And so Paul is keep, he's, he, he, he keeps on trying because God said that I'm going to go from Jerusalem to Rome. And so Paul is on the ship, and there is a ship, and the Bible says the angel appears to Paul and says to Paul, Paul, here's what you need to know. You're not going to die. You're going to make it to the destination because God said that you were going to make it. Yeah, yeah. You're going to make it because I promised that you would make it. And, my, and the promises of God are what? The promises of God are what? Would you just look at your neighbor and say, you're going to make it. And God, now, now, now the thing that's important here, I got this towel from the kitchen. I want to let y'all know. Um, the, the, just, so be encouraged. The, 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 the thing is, is that, um, so Paul has favor because God will give you favor. You, he's still a prisoner. He's still shipwrecked. But the Bible says that Julius shows favor to Paul. And you need to know that God will show you favor in your storm. No, that's, that, isn't that encouraging? Yeah, yeah, you're in a storm, but you're not dead. Yeah, you're in a storm, but you haven't gave up yet. Yeah, you're in a storm, but you hadn't run out of money yet. Yeah, you're in a storm, but the sickness hadn't taken you. God will show you favor in the storm. And not only that, not only that, when the angel of the Lord speaks to Paul, he doesn't say, Paul, you're going to be all right. Encourage yourself. Give yourself a hug. Encourage. He tells him, go tell the other soldiers. Okay? So what God's saying is when he shows you favor in the storm, the people around you need to experience the grace and the love of God through your testimony. The people around you need to experience God's power through your life. That we all soldiers, we all shipwrecked, but somebody on the ship has a relationship with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Bless your name. Bless your name. Bless your name. All right? Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah! All right, 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 all right. All right. All right we ain't in Rome yet. <laughs> we got to get to Rome. I got 10 minutes. All right, or less. <laughs> so, so, so the shipwreck takes place and lands them in Malta. And Paul, I'm sure that he's almost there. It's been years since the promise. I said it's been years since the promise. He had an enemy since the promise. He had some difficulty since the promise. He had some bad trips and some good trips since the promise. And, 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 and the shipwreck lands them in Malta. And there in Malta, the people were so nice. They were so happy to see the prisoners. And they said, listen. We're going to make y'all fire and bring y'all down the best of Malta. I mean, we're going to just treat you right. So, they, you know, Paul's like, okay, I can do this fire thing. And so he goes and gets some sticks, 
and the fire is all, you know, exciting, and they're enjoying the people who live there locally, and all of a sudden, the Bible says that a viper comes out of the fire and bites Paul's finger. Isn't that crazy? God, you said that I was going from Jerusalem to Rome, but you didn't mention none of this. Have y'all ever felt like that? God gave me a promise, but you skipped all this other stuff. You didn't tell me I was going to have to go through. You didn't tell me it was going to be hard. You didn't tell me I was going to get bit. You didn't tell me that something, by a snake mother, yeah. <laughs> They'll bite you. Uh, you didn't tell me none of this. And so Paul gets bit by a snake. And I love this because what happens is uh, the people of Malta are like, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Who would you murder? <laughs> right? You know, because every time folks see you, you know, and they say, oh, you're supposed to be saved. Why are you going through? Why are things hard for you? All that church you go to and you still got cancer? All that church you go to and you still got diabetes? Your God don't heal over at Progressive Church of God in Christ? You mean, y'all, you mean all that rolling and hollering y'all do? You mean y'all have five or six services and you're still in trouble? So they were looking at Paul all kind of crazy. Like, what's wrong with you? And the Bible said they waited to see Paul die. No, you know, you know. You ever try to figure out why you still got some folks sticking around in your life? I thought we had a disagreement. And I thought... They waited, and, 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 and God said that through your problem, I'm going to give you a platform. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you got a problem, but you got a platform. So tell your neighbor that you got a problem, but you also have a platform. I'm going to use you. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And so I'm almost done. I got three minutes. So what happens is, is that they're waiting for Paul to die. And Paul shakes the vapor off of his finger and, and, and just shakes it off. And, and, just, and, and, and the people there were like, oh, he's a god. Just, y'all go read this. I'm not making this up. The people were like, he's a god. And then that was Paul's moment. Well, actually, I'm not a god, but I know a god. Huh? And, 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 and that's what God wants you to do when he reveals his power in your life through your job. That's what God wants you to do when, you, when he reveals his power through you in the supermarket. He wants folks to be like, what? And then he wants you to be like, I give an honor to God. I thank God for being saved and sanctified and filled with the precious Holy Ghost and that would have burned fire. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have made it. I wouldn't have been able to do it. It was his grace. It was his mercy. He's my savior. I love him. All right. So, so, so because he pronounced God the God, they said, well, uh, come to think of it, the guy who's over this whole camp in Malta, the father that's dying over there. So Paul, like, oh, no problem. Paul goes over and lays his hands, and the Bible says that Publius' father is healed. And then, and then the rest of them are like, well, wait a minute. If your God can do that, I'm sick too. Like, <laughs> right? right? And, so they, and Paul runs a revival in a place that he's not supposed to be in because he's supposed to be in and so, and, 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 and you need to know that God is using you in the place where you're at. You need to know that you're not there by an accident, that it's not happenstance. But God wants to get the victory in your life through where you're at. Praise the Lord. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. But I want to, I, 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 in, in closing, I've got I've to tell you that Paul does make it to Rome. And the Bible says that once he gets to Rome, you know, he takes a couple of days to relax and pull himself together. And in three days, he calls all of the folks in charge and says, I got to tell you how I got here because y'all need to know. And they said, oh, we never heard you was coming. We didn't know. What? <laughs> well, then nobody said nothing. No letter. We didn't get no letter from Jerusalem. Festus didn't tell us nothing. Felix didn't tell us nothing. The king didn't talk to the king. We didn't know you was going to be here. But the Bible says, and I got to read this. 
It, it, it says in um, um, the, the, let me find this so I can say it right. Amen? It says that, um, well, you've got to read it yourself. I'll tell you where it's at. Um, <laughs> Acts, the 28th chapter. And in Acts, the 28th chapter, it tells us that when Paul gets to Rome, he settles. And they give him a nice little apartment, and folks just come to hear about the word. And God said to me, he said, you know what? Not only are you going to get to Rome, but you're going to thrive when you get there. Huh? You're going to thrive when you get there. And, 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 and we need to take comfort in the fact that Missionary Anderson, on the way, there are going to be some pit stops. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We need to take comfort in the fact that there are going to be some stops along the way. We need to take comfort. But, but, but the thing that I'm sure Paul held on to and we have to hold on to, when God made this promise to Paul, he stood by him. And God is standing by you. Everyone standing. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I got to read 1 Peter 4 and 12. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials which is to try you, as though some strange things happen unto you. But rejoice, inasmuch as ye are partakers in Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. You're not going through for no reason. God is with you, and you're going to make it. 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 When when I was young, and probably some of you, I'm still a little bit young compared to some of y'all, but when I was younger, the way that you engaged a young lady is you wrote a note, you know, a little piece of paper. Do you like me? Do you want to marry me? Do you want to date? And you wrote yes or no. You passed the note, and then, what's that? No. <laughs> and then you passed the note, and then, you know, you hope that you get it back. Well, what has happened today is God is sending you that little note. Do you want to be in relationship with me? Do you love me? Do you want to, do you want to have fellowship with me? And there's somebody in here, you all excited. Yes, God is with me. I'm going to make it. And you can't make it without Jesus. You're not going to go far without Jesus. You might live on, but you need Jesus. You need him in your life. And I'm wondering if there's somebody here today who will check that box and say, yes. Yes, I want to be in fellowship with you. Yes, I want a relationship with you. I don't care who else is in a relationship. I don't care what other people are doing. I want to have fellowship with Jesus Christ. I want to give my life to him. This is your moment. This is your moment. You can come down and give your life to Christ. He wants to love you. He wants to take care of you. He wants to stand right by you. He wants to give you the assurance that you're going to make it. But you have to make that first step by saying, Lord, yes. Yes. Is there anybody here that's been saying no that wants to say yes this morning? This is your opportunity. This is your chance. This is your chance to say yes to God. You don't know when you're going to get this opportunity again. This is your chance to say yes to God. Everybody who's saved ought to be praying. This is a very serious time when somebody is making a life-changing decision about whether to give their life to Christ. This, this could be it. This could be your last chance. But this is a life of just amazement. This is a life that you will not regret. This is an opportunity to give your life to Christ.